we had a request to do hydroboration oxidation of an alkyne. So here's a sample question where we're supposed to circle the major product and provide a mechanism for formation of the major product only. And we're either making the carbonyl on the end, which would give the second product, or the carbonyl on this carbon, which would give the first product. And it has everything to do with the first step. Let's not circle the major product until we do the first step, where the pi electrons are attracted to the more positive boron. Yes, H is more electronegative than boron. H has an electronegativity of 2.1, boron 2.0. So that's why we do that, attack the boron. H goes back to the carbon that spends more time with a plus charge, so a secondary one. And we're generating this species here. We got a short form for the ring. Let's use it. And now you have this double bond still with a new H on the more substituted carbon and a B on the less substituted carbon. Hydroboration is over. One step, two arrows, no intermediate. In addition, why? Because both these arrows happen at the same time, puts the H and the B on the same side of the alkene. And it reminds us why we need separate words for nomenclature of alkenes and mechanism description. Sin doesn't mean cis, does it? This is actually a trans alkene. Sin has to do with the new groups. One of them's an H. Yeah. So the new groups are on the same side. Next up, oxidation. Six steps, then tautomerization. The oxidation of the boron is always six steps minimum, whether it's alkenes, which after the six steps you're done, or alkyne, which after the six steps you're going to have to follow up with a tautomerization you're going to have an alcohol on an alkene called an enol when you do that, which must undergo tautomerization. So let's get busy. Cross off K plus. That means you have O minus. Please acknowledge that it's a minus. And you're going to need the lone pair. Step one and step six, both are acid base. So let's do our first acid base shall we? The peroxide, hydrogen peroxide is the source of the proton. And step one in our mechanism generates a peroxide radical. OOH lone pair minus water is also made. I don't want to, I don't need to show it. It's side product. Okay, so that was step one. Step two, that O minus attacks B. There are two times, or the three times you generate O minus, three times. The first two, you do this, you attack the B. And so step two, we've attacked the B with the peroxide. Step two, let's circle our steps. And you're going to get phenyl, CH2, C double C. Don't need to draw the H. Never needed to draw the H, seriously. And you now have an OOH up there. Please show the bond from O to O because that has to break in the next step. That's step two. Trying to get things taking up a little less space here. Oh, I never circled my product. Yeah, where the B is is where the O is gonna end up. And that looks like on the end carbon. So we could have circled this product after our first step, knowing that B is on the end. And here we go. Move the video out of the way. Okay. 
now it's time for a rearrangement. We got to get rid of a CB bond. I forgot the charge. I'm losing a half point. Yes, it was correctly pointed out by one of our fine students that boron with four bonds has a minus. And it's a good time to remind us of the patterns in this mechanism where the boron alternates from a zero charge to a minus, to a zero, to another minus, to a zero. So if you're using a, like a graph of charge, it, it's a W, isn't it? You got zero, minus, zero, minus, zero. I don't know if that fit on the screen, but there you go, it's a W. All right, we're gonna go back to zero by breaking that bond and not replacing it. Boron's nature is to alternate between three and four bonds. If there's one thing you remember about boron for the rest of your life, that, that's its behavior. It doesn't like doing SN2 reactions. So anytime a student tries to save a step in this mechanism by doing an SN2 on boron, they're gonna lose two points. One for doing an SN2, which is incorrect, and two for drawing the wrong intermediate or missing an intermediate, sorry, missing an intermediate. Boron's nature is not to do SN2 reactions. Okay, F, C double C. Now it's bonded up to O, which is bonded still to boron. Boron back down to three bonds. Boron's neutral when it has three bonds. Don't forget to draw the other product or else you'll forget what to do. You also made hydroxide. You generated your second O minus. As mentioned previously, it does what the first O minus did. The first O minus you made was here, it attacks B. The second O minus you made is here, it attacks the B. And we have step three, four, step four. Oh. oh. There we go. And so I've, this is where the students do the SN2 by mistake. I've seen it every semester. They think, oh, well, we're going to break that BO bond pretty soon. Let's do it now. That's not what boron does, people. Get a fourth bond to boron. That's what boron does. Three to four, three to four. I'm going to tidy the structure up a little bit. And I won't forget my formal charge this time. Back to four bonds, it's mine. Now remember, steps four and five are the, the job of four and five is to switch, switch one O on the boron for another. So we put a new O on in step four, take the other O off in step five. One arrow, oh, yeah, that's it, one arrow. The other O is the vertical one. It becomes O minus. And we're going here, step five. Next one after this is going to be an acid base, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm trying to squeeze it on the side. It's not, we're not squeezing. We'll fit it nicely. And now we have a bond of O. It's a green O. That's a minus. You also have H. Now in this one, make sure you show the bond between the H and the O. I don't need the OB bond anymore showing. There's a big clue at the top of the screen that that bond between H and O is breaking. You want to see the clue? That's a spectator. That's an O minus. There's no bond from O to H at the end. You have to break that bond. Step six, you break it using an acid base reaction. Here comes the acid base. And yeah, simple. Grab H, make a lone pair. You could even say, hey, 
not only are we going to make the enol, but we're also making that product. You don't have to show that arrow up there. I know it looks goofy, but you know it happened. And you got your enol. You are set up for tautomerization. You got your O. You got your H. And that has to convert via tautomerization to this species, not that one, the one you circled. So you need the acid to provide a proton, the base to take a proton, and clearly the proton's the one on the O because I don't see it in the product. And in this reaction, there's no strong acid present in this reaction. There's a strong base. So make sure you have the strong base that's hydroxide and its conjugate partner which is water, you need both, and your tautomerization goes like this. Grab the H, sigma makes pi, and here the pi picks up a proton from the conjugate acid. You wanna see that proton? There it is right now, it's not there because it's the wrong product. Uh, here it is. There's that proton. It ended up up here. And you got a pi there. And that, you don't have to show this on the test, but just a reminder, that is a tautomerization. Another reminder, you're going to see about 20 more tautomerizations in the next course. So, they're everywhere. So big picture here. And you got the whole deal. And that's all we got.